Hello, my name is Dan Spencer. I'm a fourth year PhD student at the University of Oxford. And in this dissertation talk, I'm going to be discussing my work modelling Io's volcanism, presenting results on how magmatism and volcanism in Io control its structural, thermal and compositional evolution. Since Voyager 1, we've known that Io is an extremely active place. Vast quantities of energy are being radiated from Io's surface, as we can see in this infrared image taken by Juno. We also know that Io is some of the solar system's highest mountains. In a classic view of planetary heat flow, this seems to be a contradiction. If the surface heat flow is so high, the lithosphere would be expected to be hot and weak, and unable then to support these high mountains. O'Reilly and Davies provided an answer to this by proposing the heat pipe model, where volcanic systems provide a direct, rapid means for magma to ascend, which carries the energy through the lithosphere up to the surface. In this model, continual eruptions bury lava back down into the interior, resulting in a top-down conveyor belt style of tectonics. Heat flow within the lithosphere, therefore, is fairly well established, but in this view, volcanic systems are ultimately just the pipelines. What processes are feeding these volcanoes? We've understood since Pierre Lettau 1979 that tidal dissipation results in large amounts of energy being deposited inside Io. This is then the source of energy that is driving melting within the interior. A useful observation that we can use to gain insight into the heat transfer processes that are operating in the interior is that the surface heat flux appears to match estimates for the amount of tidal heating uh, within the interior. This implies that heat transfer processes in the mantle are in equilibrium with tidal dissipation, and throughout this work I'll be making this assumption. We know that both the efficiency of convective heat transfer and the generation of tidal heat are non-monotonic functions of internal structure, rheology, temperature, etc. More 2003 showed that under circumstances that tidal heating matches the observed surface heat flux, convection is far too inefficient to transport that energy. They proposed that a more efficient heat transfer mechanism was needed and put forward buoyant magmatic segregation as this process. It is important to note that this analysis doesn't preclude mantle convection, but rather requires that melt extraction dominates the heat transfer. I'll return to the question of what role convection plays at the end of this talk. The present state then is that tidal heating supplies energy to Io, which is transferred through the mantle by the buoyant rise of magma and through the lithosphere by volcanic systems. Relatively little work, however, has been done to couple these three processes. During my PhD, I've developed a suite of models that couple tidal heating, mantle magmatism, and lithosphere volcanism to provide a more holistic view of planetary volcanism. I've been using these models to investigate how magmatism and volcanism control Io's structural, thermal, and compositional evolution, and to ask how we can use upcoming or planned observations to then constrain these interior processes. My approach to investigating Io starts by considering its global leading order structure, and is the subject of two published papers this year. The next stage investigates Io's long wavelength degree 2 structure, which I have initiated with a third paper that is currently in review. These papers are the subject of this talk, and anywhere that I don't have time to go into much detail, I'll refer to those three papers. The next planned stage will be to investigate Io on the volcano scale, and it's on that scale that the parallel advances in observational techniques and modelling will really benefit one another. The main complexity in coupling mantle magmatism to volcanic systems is that volcanic systems evolve on much shorter timescales than planetary mantles. My approach is then to consider a long timescale average of the volcanic systems and let them interact with the lithosphere and mantle only by the transfer of mass and of course the energy that it carries. I've put the governing equations here but I don't have time to go through them, so for the details please see the paper or ask me uh, during the Q&A. Magma is rising buoyantly in the mantle, and where it reaches high pressure beneath the lithosphere, it's extracted from the mantle pore space into the volcanic system, which then enables its continued rise. As it rises through the lithosphere, some of it then emplaces and freezes as magmatic intrusions, delivering its energy to the surroundings and the rest rises then up to the surface and erupts. 
With this model, I can then explore the role of intrusive magmatism in Io's evolution, as well as allowing the boundary between the lithosphere and the underlying mantle to evolve dynamically. What I find is that heating by magmatic intrusions is required to prevent runaway thickening of the cold lithosphere. The resurfacing and burial of erupted lavas is really efficient at detecting the cold surface temperatures into the interior. Here I show plots of temperature and porosity distributions from the model, and as we can see with the yellow lines, if there is no heating by intrusions with all magma erupting onto the surface, I predict a lithosphere thickness over 600 kilometers. If, however, as is the case on Earth, a significant amount of magma freezes intrusively within the lithosphere, it heats the buried lava and maintains a lithospheric thickness in agreement with observations. The exact thickness then depends on the exact rate at which intrusions form, as can be seen by the red and blue lines here. By coupling mantle magmatism and lithospheric volcanism, we can gain insights into how the interior structure evolves as a whole. Another significant advantage of this kind of modelling is it allows us to investigate chemical evolution because we can track compositions through the magmatism eruption and reburial processes. Here I incorporate a simple binary compositional system and couple it into the model presented earlier. What I find is that starting with a body of uniform composition, fusible material melts first and migrates towards the surface, enriching the near surface infusible material and depleting it at depth. As this process continues, the mantle becomes increasingly stratified until ultimately a steady state is, retrie is, is reached where the lower mantle is completely composed of refractory material, such as olivine, and the near surface is fusible. A fundamental result of this model is that very high temperature refractory magmas form in the lower mantle and must rise in order to facilitate heat loss. In this paper, I propose that if these magmas can migrate all the way up to the surface, they can provide an explanation for Io's highest temperature eruptions. Of course, an immediate question is how would magmas rise from such great depths? I speculate on this uh, in the paper, and please feel free to ask me about this in, in, in the Q&A. This kind of model allows us to link observations of surface eruptor to deep internal processes. If we can comprehensively map the compositions of Io's eruptor, we can start to understand if there are indeed significant compositional variations in surface eruptor, and, as I show in the paper, we can use these observations to start to constrain Io's compositional structure, its bulk composition, and the details of how magma migrates in its interior. The two models I've shown so far have all assumed uniform tidal heating. Now, this has very little effect in those one-dimensional models, but if we want to understand the real three-dimensional IO, we need to explore the effects of spatially variable tidal heating and how that can lead to non-spherically symmetric interior structure. Here I introduce a three-dimensional tidal heating model, which I couple to a, couple to a suite of one-dimensional models like those that I've shown, here considering uh, just the one chemical component system. And what I find is that the relationship between the radially, in radially integrated heating rate, which is effectively what you can see in the middle panels, where the eruption rate is a proxy for the integrated heating rate, uh, with the lithospheric thickness on the left, actually depends on how the intrusions form. If intrusions form at a constant rate, independent of the heating rate or the magma flux, my model predicts the lithosphere to be thickest where the heating rate is highest. However, if intrusions form at a rate proportional to the volcanic flux, or indeed proportional to the heating rate, I predict an almost constant lithosphere thickness. Further, then through a simple isostatic balance, I then propose how these lithospheric thickness variations may manifest as long wavelength topography, something that we can much more readily as observe. In the paper, I also provide some simple analytical relationships for the lithospheric thickness that can be directly tested by future observations. With improved observations of long wavelength topography, and by combining this kind of analysis with, for example, those investigating Io's libration amplitude, we can start to constrain both Io's interior structure as well as the distribution of tidal heating. Previously, this kind of analysis was relied upon transient observations like volcanic activity, 
by relating volcanic activity levels to underlying dissipation structures, which has the difficulty that we don't know that we've been observing eruptions long enough for it to be representative of the deep interior. Uh, here, we can start to relate internal heating distributions to features expected to vary much more slowly on much longer timescales, potentially providing a more robust link uh, to the deep interior. So in this talk, I've given a very quick tour of the work I've done over the course of my PhD. I've used coupled models of Io's tidal heating, mantle magmatism and lithospheric volcanism to investigate Io's structural, thermal and compositional evolution. The first two parts of this work have investigated Io's global leading order structure, and the third has begun to probe the next level of detail, considering long wavelength degree 2 structure. There's still a lot to explore here though. Symmetry breaking processes like tidal heating or convection must interact with global leading order processes to produce the real three-dimensional body that we observe. Fundamentally, what I hope I've shown is that I was a place that we can go a long way to understanding with relatively simple models, but to really understand this complex world, we need more observations, as well as new models that allow us to interpret these new observations. And with that, thank you very much, and I'll be happy to take any questions in the Q&A session.